Hello, North Hills. It's wonderful to look out and see so many of you here. It's, it's almost shocking just to, to see this wonderful audience tonight. And it's a joy to be here with you. I remember years ago, one of our young band students asked me, is tonight a cake concert, Mr. Lavelle? And yes, tonight is a cake concert as we recognize our, our seniors um, and wish them well as they walk across the stage and graduate um, just a few days from now. So we hope you enjoyed this opportunity to both get a tan and listen to our students make wonderful music. Many of you have often heard me share that um, a concert like this is a snapshot of the year, a snapshot of what the students have learned in their classes, our curricular band classes. Well, this is a snapshot of an incredibly difficult year. And it's in a testament to these students and their dedication and their persistence that they are here in front of you tonight. We are also grateful for our entire North Hills band community. Um, I've said for many, many years that I could tell you our schedule five years from now because it doesn't change. Well, that's changed a lot since March 13th of last year. And our students have adapted and we've moved rehearsals from here to there and inside and outside and canceled things and, and yet they still keep coming. Uh, and man, are we excited to be back this summer um, with our traditional normal schedule. Um, but through all of that, they persisted. And I stand in front of you can tell you right now that they, our seniors have passed it on. We have more students in our high school bands next year registered for classes than we've ever had at North Hills High School, even after this year that we just experienced together. People all over the country know who your students are, our band students, because of what they accomplished together, and tonight is just another example of that. Most of these students in these very stylish red shirts will not major in music, but we hope foremost that they learn to live well, and if they do that, we have a chance to play well, that they will know excellence, and that they will make great memories along the way during these important, important years of their lives. So we're so grateful for you for, for sharing them with us. We're so grateful for our administration. I know Ms. Ms. Mintzmoyer is here with us tonight for realizing that music education and the pursuit of excellence changes lives. So we hope that you enjoy the music tonight in this beautiful, beautiful um, setting for our, our final concert of the year. We will start in an, a couple moments with our combined symphonic and concert bands. But first, we have a special treat for you. And the students of our clarinet section have been leaders. They've been exemplary in um, walking the walk of continuing to make music together. And one way that they've done that literally through every challenge that's been thrown at them is through their, the clarinet choir that, that you'll hear a little bit more about in a moment. Um, but they wouldn't be here without um, the leadership of, of Dr. Amanda Morrison, who's an inspiration to our program and a dear friend to our students and to me and Mr. Beaver. So can we have a warm welcome to our North Hills clarinetist and Dr. Morrison. Thank you. 
Thank you, Mr. Beaver. <laughs> Thank you so much. I just wanted to share a little bit about what these students have done over the past several months. We started in October not knowing where we'd end up. We started on Zoom rehearsing, and as some of you may know, that has its challenges in itself. But these students showed up every week, once a week for an hour, again, not knowing what would ever come of it. So here we are today through their persistence, their diligence, and their commitment, and I couldn't be more proud of them. That first piece we played, so super clarinetty, was entitled Licorice Latte by George Weaver. It's one of my favorites, kind of one of theirs, too. This next tune we're going to play is by the March King, John Philip Sousa. You may have, have heard of it before, the Liberty Bell March, which he wrote in honor and to commemorate one of the symbols of our country um, of freedom and liberty. So conducting this piece is Malia Mueller, one of the student teachers here um, this spring, and she is from Penn State University. Thank you. 
change of pace. So one of um, one of our members, this happens to be their favorite pop tune. And for me, I love pop music, so I was super excited to do this one as well. I think it's pretty fitting for the times we're in as well. So this is Journey, Don't Stop Believing. And if you have a clarinet player in your family in your life and they would love to be part of this, we'd love to have them. So please reach out to Mr. Lavelle and Mr. Beaver. So thank you so much. The spirit that our clarinets bring to each one of their rehearsals, it, it really is inspiration to our entire game program. Can we have one more round of applause for our, our, our clarinets? She's already been introduced by uh, Dr. Morrison, but we've had a wonderful student teacher this semester from Penn State University. Um, and I was going to say welcome her to the podium, but welcome her to the parking lot. Please help me welcome Ms. Uh, Mueller. So our 
first piece today is called Free Fall by David Schaefer. It's a very exciting piece, and while you're listening, try to envision yourself free falling from the sky. Hope you enjoy. This is the first time I'm seeing the audience from this, this side of things, so thank you all for being here tonight. Um, as you know, we run four separate concert bands at our high school here, um, and they're all performing tonight, but it's so rewarding, and you'll have the unique opportunity to hear two sets of combined groups. So this is our first combined group, like Mr. LaBelle mentioned, concert band and symphonic band, but every time we get to come together as this full group, it's so rewarding. And we get to rehearse these, these pieces separately, but um, it's really cool to get to hear these guys, and I just enjoy listening to, uh, to them perform from the audience. But we're going to perform a, a, our next selection, which is called DC Comics Superheroes. And I'll give you a disclaimer. It is not, uh, there's not many classic DC superheroes um, in this medley of tunes. So they're, they're pretty newer. I think the kids knew more of them than I did, but there's um, themes from Arrow, themes from... Legends of Tomorrow, themes from Flash. I think I got most of them. But they're, um, it's a medley of DC tunes, so if you've seen any DC uh, movies in the most recent years, you'll probably recognize the themes. And that's just all this piece is. It's a medley that goes quick, and you'll get to hear a bunch of different themes. So we've enjoyed learning this in both of the classes, and we're excited to perform it for you now.
our final selection for the combined bands is Blue Ridge Saga by James Swearingen. Uh, this piece has uh, challenged the group stylistically, but has been really fun to learn the past few months. I hope you enjoy. Thank you. 
of applause for Ms. Reed. <laughs> Mrs. Webster, work, when she's working with her young students, always says there's two types of music. There's pirate songs and there's love songs. And we even um, kind of ad um, adapt that and think of that same thing here at the high school. Well, this next piece is both of those things. It's a wonderful piece by Robert Shelton called Shanties. So they are sea songs, they are pirate songs, but in the middle you'll hear the beautiful love song. This piece is definitely a challenge for Symphonic Band, which is why it's been so wonderful to work on it. Um, and we're excited to finally play it for you tonight. Robert Shelton's Shanties.
So as you know, we spent a significant part of our year at the beginning and the middle uh, virtually. And you might have heard your students talking about smart music at home, which has been a tool for us um, to play as an ensemble when we were all separate in our houses. And so when we were looking at the pieces in smart music, I clicked on a lot of them. And I remember the day that Mr. Beaver and I were all listening to music to pick a new piece for Symphonic Band because they were doing so well. And I skipped over this one. And then I said, OK, I'm going to click because it's caught an eye joke. And, um, and the composer, Chris Sharp, did the neatest version of this piece, which is the piece you've heard on the radio or you've danced to at weddings. It's that caught an eye joke. And so he does an awesome job of turning it into this barnyard folk dance for band. And then he even puts in a couple surprise tunes that I'm sure you'll be able to recognize. This is our version of Cotton Eye Joe. Before Mr. Beaver recognize um, senior members of the symphonic band, I do want to see if I can grab these. So we had a couple solos that were really well played um, in that piece. So on trombone, we had Lucas Clement in the back. Lucas, stand up. Give Lucas Ryan an applause. On tuba, where's Ryan? Ryan, Ryan Mullen. Ryan, stand up with the tuba there. Don't give tuba solos and some Dixieland trombone solos. Enough. And then the saxophones. Who played the saxophone? Did we do a solo lead? Did we do two of you there? Was it Maggie? Maggie, go ahead and stand, stand up. When I'm in a hurry, I, I call her Molly Maggenauer. But yes, I've done that twice in the last year. Maggie Molinar, she's wonderful. Um, one more round of applause for all of our symphonic band members. One of the neat parts about this concert of the year, 
um, is that we'll recognize all of our seniors. Um, and the concerts in tribute to the seniors, but we'll also um, read their names, their parents' names, where they're planning to attend college, and favorite memory um, in band. So we'll do that after all the bands tonight. And we have one senior to recognize in symphonic band. And, that, and I'll ask that the senior in the band stand, and if um, any parents are in the audience, you stand as well. Um, Mr. Josh Jones on the French horn, and his parent, Heather Bronder. Josh plans to pursue a career in music and attend a trade school. And his favorite memory in band is the giant band conga line from the cabins to the field at band camp during junior year. Congratulations, Josh. Josh. And along with recognizing our seniors tonight, we do have scholarships to uh, Mr. Beaver. Do you have those, by the way? Oh, great. Thank you, Mr. Beaver. Um, Lots of moving parts, folks. You think it's tricky to do a concert in an auditorium. Try doing it in a parking lot. So uh, the, um, we have lots of scholarships um, that are presented each year to, to our seniors. Um, thousands of dollars of scholarships specifically to music department seniors, which is just remarkable and a testament of the power of music in our lives and the power that music has had in this community over many, many decades. Um, often we'll present several of those tonight to members of the bands that have received them, but um, our awards night is actually coming up, so the students will find out about several of these in the days to come. Tonight, though, we do, um, and those would include the Hunter Scholarship, the Divakaita Scholarship, the Burke Family Scholarship for Music Excellence, and the Allegheny Brass Band Scholarship. Um, we do have one that we are going to pre present tonight, um, and it's one that's very personal um, to me. Um, Miss Kay, or Rita Calagiris, um, taught in the North Hills School District for over 30 years. She was the director of our orchestras and our marching band then from 1990 to 2008 where I was a student of hers. She gave herself completely to the students of this program in this community um, and she passed in 2015. And each year her family comes and provides this scholarship to two seniors in her name. So great friends of our, 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 our band program for literally decades. Um, please help me welcome her sister and brother-in-law, Lynn and Ethel Barker, to um, present this year's Aridi Calagiris Memorial Scholarship. to be here again this year to present these two scholarships in memory of my sister in honor of my sister. Each year we look for Lynn and I look forward to reading the responses that our applicants give us. Um, we look forward to it and we look forward to learning about how they have grown as, as a result of being a part of this music program here in North Hills. And it's, we look forward to hearing about their experiences, what they've learned, what they will take with them as they transition from high school seniors to college freshmen. Uh, there's always three people I like, or three groups I like to acknowledge. Uh, first off, we didn't do this by ourselves. We have someone else that's involved in our process to picking the scholarship winners. He's a gentleman who worked with Reader for over 30 years with the band and the orchestra and the kids. He's sitting over here. His name is Mr. David Matthews. Could you please give him a round of applause? <laughs> David, could you stand up over there? I know you're over there. There he is. Um, every year, I also like to acknowledge what a great job Mr. Lavelle and the, and the, um, the other people involved with your children do every day. It's not a Monday through Friday, get here at 7 o'clock, leave at 3 o'clock job. It's a lot more than that. Uh, the last group I want to acknowledge is all of you, the band parents, the moms, the dads, the grandparents, the aunts, the uncles, the brothers and sisters have to listen to them practice, the cousins, everyone that gets them to where they go. And Rita always said that without the band parents, there is no band. Without the band parents, there is no orchestra. Without the band parents, there are no kids. So I'd like to get a round of applause for all you sitting in the back out there 
in the sunshine. And thank you so much for what you do. So in past years, we have two recipients of scholarship. The first is Libby Carroll. Ellie Gertner. We're going to do a quick stage change here and bring out our wind symphony. So symphonic band, if you can grab these seats over there, the empty seats that, that, are, that are there. Rowan, if you can grab one of those crates for everyone to put their music in, that'd be great on your way. So symphonic band can grab those empty seats over there. Wind symphony, you can grab these empty seats right there. You can start to warm up and we'll be on Nettleton in just a second. We'll be right Okay, we're ready folks. So now we have two pieces with our wind symphony, one of our four bands at the high school. This is a, a tune, when you hear it, that you may recognize. It was written in the 1700s, but it's been adopted um, as a folk hymn by the American and the English church tradition, and you may know it as Come Thou Font. Um, this is Johnny Vinson's version for a concert.
we're so proud of the students for all their work on all of the pieces, but I couldn't be more proud of this group on this piece you're about to hear, English Folk Song Suite. And the reason is, there's no better way to describe it is, this is a professional piece. And we've learned that with the, with the students. Um, it's even one of the first band pieces ever written. Um, so as band music was progressing, um, one of its first purposes was for the military. And the actual title is English Folk Song Suite for Military Band. I actually told them this is probably a pretty authentic performance as it would have been performed outdoors uh, back in the 1920s when it was first written. Um, it's written in three movements. We're going to perform the first and third for you this evening. And there are two marches. They're full of many different folk songs. There's too many to list. You're going to hear a whole bunch of different English folk songs throughout these um, first couple of movements right here. We'll feature a couple soloists, lots of full ensemble playing. And the kids have absolutely done a phenomenal job on this professional wind band piece. So I hope you enjoy English Folk Song Suite.
Absolutely wonderful job. That's not a short piece either. It takes a lot of endurance to get through that. And I'm sure at the premiere, there wasn't helicopters and planes flying over, but it was a nice added touch as well. Um, so we have a few seniors to recognize in Wind Symphony. And I forgot to mention at the, um, the, the symphonic band, uh, we have a senior plaques um, for all of our senior band members. And we have marching band plaques and pins that we would normally um, present at our band banquet that we have um, ready for all of our seniors. So after the concert where the cupcakes will be over by the tables there, our seniors can pick up um, their, their senior materials over there. So Wind Symphony seniors, starting in our baritone section, Miss Sam Vermillion and her parents, Rebecca Schmid and Greg Schmid. Sam plans to attend Penn State for biomedical engineering. And her favorite memory from band is whenever we would get to teach the new low brass rookies all of our crazy traditions and watching them go from being terrified of us into joining in on the craziness fun as well. Sam Vermillion. Up to our clarinet section, Ms. Grace Wang and her parents, Hong Mei Zhu and Shunhua Wang. Grace will attend Bernard College of Columbia University to study anthropology and medicine. Her favorite memory from band is getting to go on the spring tours and performing with everyone. Grace Wang. From our flute section, Olivia Yoder and her parents, Erica Yoder and Kevin Yoder. Olivia will attend Slippery Rock University and play on the women's soccer team. Her favorite memory from band is going to New York City with the band in 2019. Olivia Yoder. <laughs> to our trombone section, Ruby Langhurst and her parents, Leanne and Steve Langhurst. Ruby plans to attend George Washington um, University for International Relations through an ROTC Marine Scholarship. Her favorite memory is playing Hey Jude in the Rain. Ruby Langhurst. Staying in our trombone section, Alexander Sarawick and his parents, Christy Sarawick and JJ Sarawick. He will attend basic training and Defense Language Institute in 2022 for the PA National Guard. I don't know about this favorite memory, Alec. <laughs> his favorite memory is when Mr. Beaver got the marching band buses lost on our way to a football game. <laughs> I'll leave my side of the story out of it. Alex Sarawick. <laughs> to our baritone saxophone section, uh, Mr. Tyler Dumas and his parents, Teresa and David Dumas. Tyler plans to um, attend Kent State University for musical theater. His favorite band memory, well, there's too many. He can't pick just one. Tyler Dumas. Orchestral musician who's a horn player, you'll hear great horn parts in this piece. Um, but this piece was actually written for the San Antonio Orchestra, and then he himself enjoyed it so much he transcribed it for, for band. Uh, so it's really a, a journey, and it's subtitled Fiesta, so we hope you enjoy Symphonic Dance Number 3.
four panelists and me and uh, a colleague of mine who I'm good friends with, uh, unbeknownst to ourselves until that moment, had um, the top three pieces the same. Um, this one, Kim's song with Philip Lewis. Um, and the host asked me why, and, and this is why. So American Elegy, above all, is an expression of hope. It was composed in memory of those who lost their lives in Columbine High School on April 20th, 1999, and to honor the survivors. But it is offered as a tribute to all of us with great strength and courage in the face of a terrible tragedy. tragedy. Frank Tickelli goes on to say he hopes the work can serve as, a, as one reminder of how fragile and precious life is and how intimately connected we all are as human beings. It's a long work, and you'll hear it first Mr. Tickelli asks a question in the horns, and it takes a long time to answer that question. You'll hear the dissonance that's associated with the pain and the fear. And then we talked about how over time, you'll hear the dissonance at first is, is rooted very deeply in the core. And then it comes back several times. And the very last time, it's up in the flutes, and it's fairly even there. And he finally answers that, that question that he poses so early in the piece with that moment of hope, that moment of perseverance. So it was easy for me that this is, was a piece that when bands came back, as that um, colleague asked on that uh, podcast, is that we needed to perform. So American Elegy, an expression of hope.
Since Jack lives in Wisconsin, I asked the band if they would mind doing it one more time and seeing if we could get one version to record and send to him with less motorcycles in the background. So since it's only about two minutes long, we're going to play it for you one more time right now.
the first time in months. Emily Schreffler. <laughs> to our horn section, Rebecca Slagle and her parents, Deborah and Brian Slagle. Rebecca plans to attend CCAC and Youngstown State University for music education. Her favorite memory from band is playing happy together and looking over at Maggie. Rebecca Slagle. To our saxophone section, Aaron Cosmatch and his parents, Andy and Trish Cosmatch. Aaron plans to attend Allegheny College for Environmental Science with an ROTC, ROTC scholarship. His favorite memory from band is hands down the band camp dances. Aaron Cosmatch. <laughs> Staying in our saxophones, Mr. Sam Halper and his parents, Jennifer and Craig Halper. Sam plans to attend Ohio University to study civil engineering. His favorite memory is all the jokes and laughs he was able to share with his friends. Sam Halper. <laughs> to our trumpet section, Asia Neal and her parents, Elise and John Neal. Asia plans to attend major in advertising at Temple University. Her favorite memory from band is playing John Mackey's Undertow, iconically conducted by Mr. Beaver, at Messiah College next to Adam, Ali, Charlie, and Harrison. Rip the mute. Asia Neal. <laughs> to our horn section, Katie Durig, and her parents, Lynn and Paul Durig. Katie plans to attend the University of Pittsburgh, and her favorite memory from band is finally joining marching band at literally the last possible second after years of being pestered by Asia. Katie Durig. <laughs> to our bass clarinets, Dylan Riley and his parents, Deborah and Patrick Riley. Dylan plans to attend the University of Pittsburgh for engineering, and his favorite memory of band is spending time and making music with his friends. Dylan Riley. Percussion, Dan Ross Miller and his parents, Michael and Laverne Ross Miller. Dan plans to attend Ohio University and major in biology at their honors college. Dan's favorite memory was spending time with his big brothers at band camp. Dan Ross Miller. <laughs> to our clarinet section, Marie Gertner and her parents, Christy and David Gertner. Marie tends to attend Messiah University to pursue a degree in music education. Marie's favorite memory from band is running through Disney at night in flip-flops to get to check-in after waiting in line to get mac and cheese. Marie Gertner. <laughs> to our horn section, Emma Letke and her parents, Maureen and Lane Letke. Emma plans to attend Gannon University to major in nursing. Her favorite memory from band is reaching the peak of the mountain with memories and having a great time with football games, spring trips, band class, and band camp with her best friends. Emma Letke. Back to our flutes, uh, Maddie Zerone and her parents, Julia Glenser and Phil Zerone. Maddie tends to attend college um, with the intended major of business management and administration. Her favorite memory from band is playing Earth with Wind Ensemble at the PMEA convention or accidentally dropping a frozen water bottle on a lady in New York. <laughs> Hashtag, if you know, you know. Back to our tubas, Luke Malatak and his parents, Amy and David Malatak. Luke plans to attend CCAC to study business management. His favorite memory is the Sheets runs after home football games. Luke Malatek. <laughs> Next door in the tuba is Dan Suchin and his parents, John and Kathy Suchin. Dan plans to attend CCAC to study law. His favorite memory was playing Mount Everest in Wind Symphony. Dan Suchin. To our percussion section, Josh Ebert and his parents, Amy and Jim Ebert. Josh will be attending Eastern Kentucky University to study fire arson and explosion investigation. His favorite memory is being with his friends at Disney. Josh Ebert. <laughs> and 
And last but not least, in our contra, contra clarinet and berry sax section, Libby Carroll. Libby attends to, plans to attend Otterbein University to study design and technology with a focus on stage management. And her favorite memory from band is getting to become a clarinet and play with amazing people every Tuesday night at Clarinet Choir. Libby Carroll. We traditionally also recognize um, some, some seniors um, who have gone above and beyond um, helping us to live the way that we, we, we choose to as a band. And uh, for each one of these awards, there is a plaque that hangs in our, in our high school band room. Uh, the, fir the first that we want to uh, share tonight um, of these um, extraordinary people is the Service Award for Band. And both of these um, um, students uh, truly focus on everybody else. Their focus is on serving and servitude leadership. This year's Service Award for Band, and if you could please stand, uh, goes to Emma Lepke and Libby Kelly. Christy Van Newkirk um, Woodwin Award has been, has been award, awarded since 1988. Christy was a, a member of this band um, and tragically killed in a hot air balloon accident. One of our commissions is in memory of Christy. And each year we recognize a Woodwin player. And, and this year, and I, and I heard for the first time her senior memory, and it made perfect sense um, to put those, those things together. She always has a positive and grateful spirit about everything that she does. Uh, the Christy Van Newkirk Award winner this year is senior flute player Emily Schrechter. We often talk about um, three laws of leadership, that we cannot lead others until we lead ourselves, that we cannot give what we do not have, and as servant leaders, we're only worth what we give away. And um, when I think of this student, um, he always gives everything that he has to others. And he has proven that in our jazz band um, by, by leading our saxophone uh, quartet last year, quintet, a group of students that ended up being our jazz one saxophone section this year. Um, and we wouldn't have the jazz band that we did this year if it wasn't for his leadership over the past two years. So the Louis, Louis Armstrong Jazz Award goes to Sam Halper. Stay standing. So this one's uh, this one's an easy one. Each year we we award uh, Miss K started awarding the director's award for band, which goes to a section for their um, um, exemplary modeling of who we want to be as a band. And it was a very easy um, a selection this year. So if there's anyone out here as well, can we have all of the saxophones in, a, in our band program? If you would stand and join Sam, the saxophone section. <laughs> And lastly, each year around the country um, is awarded um, the John Philip Sousa Award for an exemplary musician, um, and, and, and in the case of this person, um, also an exemplary person in terms of her non-musical qualities. The John Philip Sousa Award this year goes to flute player, senior, and our drum major, Maddie Zoy. So we're going to combine our Wind Symphony and Wind Ensemble and bring this little um, shinding to a close here. So Wind Symphony, grab your seats. You've got one minute to put air through your horns, and then we will share with you.
This medley from the 90s will have a lot of tunes that, that, that you probably will recognize. Um, from Seasons of Love to This is the Moment, 
um, Beauty and the Beast, and then eventually ending with the Circle of Life. But a lot of these have, have some extra musical um, meanings, especially at this time of year for...
excited to get started with them tonight. And so the drum major of the 21, 22, did I get that right? Oh, yeah. gonna work with, will be Brenton Perkins. <laughs> Thank you so much for being with us here tonight. Um, students, the future is bright. The future is bright. And you've showed how fast you can clean up a parking lot over the last couple weeks. So let's impress ourselves and set an all-time limit cleaning up the parking lot. Parents, thank you so much. Drive safely. Good night.